This narrated virtual tour of the space gallery covers five aircraft, three spacecraft, four satellites and three missiles and launch vehicles, all of which involved the U.S. Air Force. This Fairchild C-119J flying boxcar made the world's first mid-air recovery of an object returning from space. In August 1960, it caught the Discoverer 14 satellite using recovery gear lowered from the open rear door. This mechanism snagged the satellite's parachute, and a winch slowly reeled the film capsule into the aircraft. Satellite catching became an important and regular U.S. Air Force operation to recover secret reconnaissance satellite film. The X-15's purpose was to fly high and fast, testing the machine and subjecting pilots to conditions that astronauts would face. It made the first manned flights to the edges of space and was the world's first piloted aircraft to reach hypersonic speeds, or more than five times the speed of sound. This aircraft is the second of the three X-15s. North American modified it for even greater speed, adding the large orange and white propellant tanks and lengthening the fuselage about 18 inches. This was the fastest X-15, reaching Mach 6.7 in October 1967. This aircraft represents the Martin X-24A, which the U.S. Air Force and NASA flew to study flight characteristics and maneuverability of lifting bodies. A lifting body is a fixed-wing aircraft or spacecraft, such as the Space Shuttle, in which the body itself produces lift. The X-24A paved the way for the Space Shuttle by showing that a lifting body could glide through the atmosphere and land on Earth like an airplane. The X-24B aircraft showed that a lifting body could glide through the atmosphere and make a precise landing on a runway like an airplane. Its flat bottom and long nose added surface area to improve gliding qualities, increasing range and maneuverability. This ability to glide to a landing at a specific spot was an important step toward later space shuttle operations. The unmanned, unpowered Boeing X-40A was the first phase flight test vehicle for the U.S. Air Force's Space Maneuver Vehicle Program. This program aimed to develop small, reusable, highly maneuverable spacecraft for deploying satellites and conducting surveillance and logistics missions. It successfully demonstrated the glide capabilities of its fat-bodied, short-wing design and validated the proposed guidance system. Project Mercury was the first American human spaceflight program. Its goals were to put astronauts into orbit around the Earth, to find out if they could survive and work in space, and recover the crewmen and spacecraft safely. Between 1961 and 1963, six successful flights proved Americans could fly in space. This Mercury spacecraft is a flight-rated production vehicle that never flew. This Gemini B was a modified version of the two-man Gemini spacecraft that carried NASA astronauts into orbit on 10 flights during 1965-66. It was built for the Air Force's Manned Orbiting Laboratory Program, a top-secret effort to take extremely detailed reconnaissance photographs of Cold War adversaries' territory from space. One important difference from Gemini spacecraft is the circular hatch leading from the crew compartment through the heat shield in the rear of the vehicle. This hatch allowed astronauts access to a 19-foot-long manned orbiting laboratory module that would have reconnaissance cameras. The program was cancelled before any manned missions were launched. Project Apollo's main goal was to land astronauts on the moon and return them safely to Earth. Apollo 15 focused mainly on lunar science, and was the first mission to use a lunar rover vehicle. It was the fourth successful moon landing mission and the only Apollo mission with an all-U.S. Air Force crew. This command module was named Endeavour, after the ship that carried Captain James Cook on his 19th century voyage. Gambit-1 vehicles flew from 1963 to 1967 and were the first satellites to feature stereo cameras. Their most significant targets included Soviet missile silos. It added important new close-up imagery capability to wide-area search satellites already in use. Exposed film returned to Earth in the film return capsule, which fell through the atmosphere, descended by parachute and was recovered in mid-air by specially equipped aircraft near Hawaii. The Gambit 3KH-8 photo reconnaissance satellite improved on the Gambit 1KH-7 by providing much better image resolution. The improvement made the satellite extremely stable as a photo platform, conserved film and increased the number of targets photographed. Defense Support Program satellites provided the Air Force with early warnings of ballistic missile launches and nuclear detonations for more than 40 years. The satellite's infrared sensors detect heat from missile plumes against the Earth's background. 
They were developed in response to the growing threat from Soviet and Chinese nuclear ballistic missiles in the 1960s. This satellite, known as Spacecraft P-81, carried an experimental infrared telescope code named Teal Ruby. The Teal Ruby telescope, along with other experiments, was to be launched on a space shuttle in the 1980s. However, the Air Force cancelled the project due to high costs, technology issues and complications following the Space Shuttle Challenger accident. Instead, the spacecraft became a testbed for studying how space equipment ages in storage. Boeing's inertial upper stage was an autonomous upper stage booster rocket used from 1982 to 2004. After launch on an unmanned rocket or inside a space shuttle, it boosted its payload into a higher orbit or sent planetary and solar probes on their way through space. The Titan IV-B was the Air Force's largest and most powerful expendable single-use rocket used to place satellites into orbit. They boosted payloads into low Earth, polar, or geosynchronous orbit. The front end of the rocket is the payload fairing. It protected satellites on the way through the atmosphere, then broke away to release the payload. Fairings varied in length according to the size of the satellite. In the late 1970s, the U.S. anticipated Soviet development of killer satellites that could destroy vital U.S. reconnaissance and communication satellites. The ASM-135A anti-satellite missile countered this threat. It was an air-launched multistage missile but the project was cancelled in 1988. I hope you enjoyed this narrated virtual tour of the Air Force Museum Space Gallery. If you would like to tour other galleries in this series, convenient links are listed in the description section below this video.